Praise the Lord. Good evening. God bless you. Welcome to Wednesday night Bob, uh, service tonight at the Four Myers Rescue Mission, the greatest place on earth. Somebody say amen. amen. Let's stand for prayer, please. Pastor Jerome, you're in prayer, sir. Pastor, you're in prayer. Blessed Jesus, once again, we come. This yes, Lord. Lord. Appreciate you. We come to seek thy face this evening, Lord. Seeking thy help this evening. Seeking thy leadership. Lord. Asking, Lord, that you'll be a part of this service tonight, Lord, that you'll take charge of the atmosphere, Lord. Lord, that you will bind up and cast out all those spirits, Lord, that need not be present. We're asking for thy anointing, Lord, upon the preacher, Lord. That anointing upon the singing, Lord, upon the prayer, Lord from the gift and the gift giver. We're asking that you pour thy spirit upon us all, granting us ears to hear and a heart to receive. And for all that you do this evening, we give thee the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's come before the Lord tonight with a cheerful heart. Let's, push, let's worship. Let's praise him. He's worthy. No matter where we are tonight, it don't make a difference. God can hear your prayer. God still hears your prayer. Amen. Amen. Brother Steve. Amen. All right. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Let's turn to page 449 in our hymnal. to page 233. Amen. Amen. 
right, let's turn it over to page 448. Is that awesome, awesome promise? It would never lose its power. Mm. Let's never forget where we come from and where we're going. The power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Can I have one testimony tonight? Can someone get up and give God the glory for the judge? I just want to thank the Lord tonight. You know, I'm just taking the last couple days, you know, guys that come in and out of here. As many guys I do, you know. Yeah. Just I was so glad the last time when I went to all relapse and I, I, I knew what he wanted, he wanted all of me and none of me. Mm -hmm. You know, I see so many guys that go out of here and they're equipped. 
Why? Because they're not getting the time they want. You know, the new strategy is never going to come. Amen. I don't know about anybody else, but my selfishness and my sins were brought me here. And Mr. Ledger, his service the other night was right. This is the salvation point. This is the crossroads right here. We're all at the same spot. And now I just, he just wants your love. He wants us to put him first. Period. <laughs> it's just nothing beyond that. Amen. If you try to go off on these roads to find this other way, there is no other way. Forever. I mean, it's either him or death. And you wonder why True. these new strategies don't come to fruition. True. <laughs> True. He's never going to allow that. Amen. And I'd love him for that. You know, he wants to set you free, but I mean, it's you got to make a decision. You know, and I just, I'm so glad that he spoke to me when he did. In the way that I understood how much you love me and how much I love him. So Amen. Amen. Definitely appreciate that. Amen. The other Amen. night I saw compassion and caring, like we are told repeatedly that God feels about us. The other night I had to go back to the ER. While I'm waiting, all of a sudden there came an announcement on a walk, ER bed 14. What happened was there was a vet there, and he had passed away. They wrapped him in an American flag, and on both sides of the hallways, everybody was saluting and standing, showing him thank you. And they didn't know this man from nothing, but they cared enough to say thank you for your service. Amen. Amen. Uh, Amen. I just want to thank sure. Absolutely. Amen. Absolutely. Absolutely. He does answer to Glory. Brother Joe? Sir? Well, first, I wanted to compliment the song selection. It kind of felt sentimental to me. It was like awesome. the choices that Sister Wu would have made, you know, Amen. And associated with her. But I do want to give thanks. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was sitting back there. I came to church late. I had a driving assignment. And I'm sitting there, and, and I realized I wasn't wanting for anything in particular. I wasn't obsessed on this issue or this issue. I was centered in the spirit. And it occurred to me, this isn't so unusual anymore. And it's taken the molding of this experience over some time. And I thank God for that. That's what it took. Amen. I'm so glad God is now with us as power. Glory. I'm so thankful for God. You know, I could get up in the morning and look in that mirror and say, wow, I dropped that pride. I got rid of that old kernel. It's good you can wake up in the morning and you know it's, you ain't got to wake up sad no more. You ain't got to wake up miserable no more. True. You can wake up peaceful, happy, but it's all up to you. Trust and believe in faith. You know, it wasn't nothing but a test what I went through. What happened to me, and it wasn't nothing but a test. Because sometimes God will test you and test you, a way to slow you down. Sometimes God will bring something, <coughs> a lot of things to your teacher. Well, man, one can't bring to your teacher, but God can. Amen. Sometimes it's good to have. Faith in God at all times, not sometimes, all the time. Because you lose that faith, you lose you lose in God. Because God is faith. God is the light and the truth and the truth. Amen. I'm so glad, you know, I can, you know, go and um, on the job, not talking about the job, but just talking about the job. But, um, and talk to my boss, man, and stuff. And he, you know, he's a religious person too, and he talks about the Bible a lot. And that's what really, really keeps me strong and focused. Because sometimes you can be around negative things instead of positive things. True. That's what really, really throws you back for a lot of things. You can be getting your blessings. And, you know, sometimes I go around things. I said, I'm better than this right now, but sometimes it's good to separate yourself from negative and focus on 
some positive because you know negative things can get you nowhere. For a lot of people love to see you down and out, but to have something to talk about and stuff like that. But a lot of people should, you know. But I'm so glad God dealt with me. God dealt with me. Amen. I'm so glad God brought me up out of that cage before I was living in a dog, very dog cage. And you know, tears came to my eyes. A lot of nights, a lot of people just don't realize I been in the streets is not fun. It's very, very, very hard. True. But I you know I had to get down my knees sometime in a, in a house, but I found <coughs> the house wasn't didn't pay no rent, didn't pay no water bill, didn't pay no light bill. But in the one time it's cold, you gotta go snatch blankets and sheets and stuff off people's lines and stuff. They don't harm the house, you know what I'm saying? And go drag off in that house and stuff and wrap up with it. You know, but it's a God. It's a God bringing out stuff like that. That's why sometimes I look back at my, my past and see just how far I became in life. Amen. God is good. I yes. forget about where I come will, you know what I'm saying, where I come from. I'm not ashamed to get up and tell a real a lie testimony, but I'm not preaching. It's a testimony, it's a lie testimony. A living testimony, everlasting testimony. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Brother Ray. You know, it's blood out there. I left that there on the ground. But just, you know, the blood, you know, I'm just covered by the blood of Jesus now, but, you know, my blood is in Jesus. I got my blood, I give all the things to Jesus. And I get some things, I get everything to Jesus. What I left out there. I ask the Lord to burn that bridge. Well, I won't cross that bridge again. Glory. I'm so thankful, Paul, you know. I could, you know, wake up one and half and stuff. Sometimes I just get up and just go to singing and stuff like that because, you know, I don't have no reason to be sad because, you know, because God done lift me up and he studied up with me. He studied blessing me. Amen. Because, you know, I believe in him and I have faith in him. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Appreciate that. Amen. Let's go to prayer real quick. I know that pastor has a word. Sure. Uh, I'm just, I'm blessed to hear uh, Red talk about that kind of thing, and uh, I've seen a lot of guys come a long way and learn some good lessons, and I've learned certain lessons, and, um, I had Joe's job when I first got here, and, and, uh, and I'm not, I'm not bragging, it was, it's, it's not the, it's, it's a job, and it's nothing to brag about sometimes. It's rough. You know, but, so Bob offered it to me, and I, and I wasn't sure, I'm like, I don't know, but I lasted a few months and did the best I could, and, uh, I learned something about, I don't mean to preach or anything, I'm, I'm just telling you that I learned that's it. And, I, and I'm happy that God taught me these lessons uh, here especially. And so in that, I learned when God gives you natural lessons as far as positivity and negativity, I learned when men try to create a reality in that dog. Uh, and it's kind of like, it's similar in prison, it's similar in certain small communities, where you try to create the tension, you try to create the happiness, create the negativity, create the threats, create the competitions, create the hierarchy among everybody, instead of allowing natural positivity and negativity, which is beyond just a circle of reality. Mm -hmm. You know, a select few guys, and, and when I was dorm captain, I would break that apart sometimes, because guys would gang up and they, they try to act friendly with some guys, but poke a little bit, and poke a little bit, and poke a little bit. I'd break it up and say, I know you're pretending to be friendly, but you're really poking at somebody trying to get them aggravated. You need to stop. So anyway, I am happy that within a tight community like this, that God showed me really the difference between God's natural uh, uh, lessons with positivity and negativity and what men try to orchestrate within communities and create a reality, which is not always a natural God lesson in positivity. So I'm blessed because of that. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Um, so okay. today, um, going based off what Red said, I kind of feel like I'm being current and tested. Um, you know, I 
know, I got into an argument with my sister over a materialistic item. Um, you know, I went to the smoke pit, I let all my anger out, I went back to the shack and I kind of realized that, you know, I should probably be grateful for the things that I have. The people that are currently in my life, amen. the people that are trying to show me something, kind of like that amen, that's Greg Cook, a great friend of mine. You know, <laughs> things like that, the people around me. Always surround myself around positivity. Always. Absolutely. 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 Just go out and have Breath. a service here. Uh, past few days, a selection of songs and everything else. Amen. Good. Amen. Amen. Let's. I understand. Like, I understand. Sure. Group, I want to. I want to honestly thank the Lord for opportunity because He just opened up a lot of good things for me. He just gave me my family back. Amen. He just gave me my daughter back. He just gave me my freedom last week, and I ain't got no reason mm -hmm. to be happy about that. Am I celebrating my birthday and I'm happy about it? You know, and, you know, I'm just letting you know the Lord. The Lord has been touching me. You know what I'm saying? Amen. So I want to just thank the Lord for our opportunity. Absolutely, absolutely. God is good. God is good. Let's pray today for our pastor who brings the word. Let's pray for the men who are coming up to the altar. Let's pray for each and every one of us. Let's pray for our staff, our men of God. Let's pray for our country. Um, let's trust God for all things. Even if you can't see, it's not a question of seeing, it's a question of believing. Don't lose your hope, don't lose your faith. We're in a good place. It's a learning experience each and every day. We don't know it all, we don't have it, we don't have it all. We never will. We can obtain it all, we, we keep pressing forward. Any more prayer requests this evening? Our, our troops, amen, amen. <coughs> Okay. Okay. <coughs> Sister Leslie? Um, the people that um, would, would normally be here would can't uh, be here. Okay. Yes. Yes. We're going to cover them in the blood. There's power in the blood. Nurses and doctors in the hospitals. Okay. We need them too. Um, Unschooled <coughs> and all the families around the planet that are being affected by this virus that's going all over. God is still in control. Sir. Along with what I said, learn the balance for everybody to learn the balance between real positivity, real negativity, who's playing games, and keep your balance, keep faith, and be content. We walk humble. We walk humble with each other. Mr. Stewart. Mr. Stewart. Mr. Stewart. Yes, sir. Brother Jody. All the saints that support the mission. Absolutely. 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 There are a lot of people who love us, who love it and love God. That's why we're here, because they love God. That's yeah, I was just thinking that people with, this, with what's going on currently in the world, how many millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of people are just lost, are just paralyzed in fear, and it doesn't need to be that way if they come to him. So let's pray to do it. Man, Amen. we trust God for this. Hear people's prayers exactly how they say those Absolutely, absolutely. Let's stand for prayer. Pastor, sir, you want to pray, sir? Heavenly Fathers, we bow before you tonight. We certainly are glad again for an opportunity to look to you, the great author and finisher of our faith, and helping us day by day. We certainly thank you so much. Our fathers, we gather in tonight. You see this congregation. You see every heart that's here, every mind is born, we pray. And we ask thee in the blessed name of Jesus that you would walk among us, O oh Lord, and that you would speak to our hearts and to our lives. Father, we pray this evening that thou would put thy hand upon Brother Ledger as he brings us the message of the hour. We pray, dear Lord, the Holy Spirit to take his words, use them, our Father, to speak to the men's heart. Dear Lord, they're not where they need to be. Oh, Lord, we just pray tonight that thou will undertake. Lord, we pray that thou will help for the many requests. Father, we do pray for our country. You see the shape it's in. And, Lord, we feel like maybe this might be judgment that's coming upon us, oh, Lord, because we've rejected you. We've turned you out of our schools. We've turned you out of our courts. We've turned you out of our government. We've turned you, dear Lord, in some instances out of the church. And, Lord, we pray tonight that thou will help us. 
that we will come to the place, dear Lord, of deep repentance before you, and that you would heal our land, dear Lord, we ask, and send a mighty revival that would sweep over us, oh God, and help many, many men and women and boys and girls come to the place of seeking your face and knowing you in a, in a relationship, dear Lord, like they've never known before. We pray, dear Lord, that you would undertake for all the requests that were made known. We bring them to you, Lord. You know each and every one of them. You see our troops, dear Lord, around the world. And Lord, we pray that each one of us probably knows somebody that's in the, the service of some sort. And Lord, we want to remember them. We pray, Lord, we lift them up. You would overshadow them and protect them, dear Lord. Father, we pray tonight that you would just look down in a mighty way and touch Mr. Stewart. Lord, we pray that you would be with him and that you would bless him and that you would help him, dear Father, as he recovers from this hip surgery. Lord, we pray tonight your gracious will would be accomplished. Uh, Lord, we pray as we're shut in for a little while and quarantined, oh God, uh, from all the things that are out in the world, we pray, dear Lord, this would be a time for us to get along with you, uh, that there'd be many men would come into the church, dear Lord, uh, and pray and, and read the word uh, and draw nigh to you, dear Jesus, we pray. Uh, Lord, we pray that you would continue to keep a dome down over the top of this mission and protect it, Lord, we ask. Uh, let the blessed Holy Spirit stop any evil spirit that would try to come through the gates, yes. dear Lord. Uh, and we pray that thou would just help us, dear Lord, as Christians, uh, to draw nigh to you, dear Lord. All the more we pray in this hour in which we're living. Uh, Lord, we pray tonight to have your will and your way in this service. And we'll bless you and thank you and praise your wonderful name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Glory. Moses, please come forward. Dear Lord, I want to thank you for everything that you've done for us. All of us here, I'd like to remind everybody of how, how much the world has been turned upside down and how many families are going through a, a whole lot of things right now. They're working from home and kids not going to school and, and having to find groceries for them and having to deal with the, the people that are upset in the stores and just all of this that's going on. And, I want, to, I want to thank you for, for being unsheltered from it. Uh, there's a lot, a lot of stuff that we don't have to deal with, and it's all because of you. Yes. And I want to thank you from, from the bottom of my heart for everybody for that. And please bless those that support the mission, because they're going through this stuff too. And, and we need their help, and we just hope that you'll bless them and, and be with them, Lord. Please be with them. Reverend Fledger, as he brings us the message tonight. Yeah. Thank you for everything once again. Do you sing a great amen? for giving tonight. Let's open our hearts. Let's get ready. Walk in the presence of God tonight. Pastor.
just playing, I'm pressing towards the glory land. Are you pressing? Amen. I trust. Amen. Amen. Well, I thought we'd look at a passage of Scripture in the last chapter of John tonight. John, the last chapter. I believe that's number 21. Yes. John, chapter 21. know about you, but often, sometimes at least in my Christian experience, the Lord speaks to me pretty pointedly. <laughs> so you go, oh, yes, Lord. Um, that's uh, sort of how I felt as I read this tonight. John chapter 21, let's start reading at verse number 20. John 21, 20. Then Peter, turning about, seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved following, which also leaned on his breast at supper and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Peter, seeing him, saith unto Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? And Jesus said, to him, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. What is that to thee? Lord, thank you for your word tonight. And would you please warm our hearts with your presence and help us to speak. Bless us, Lord. Make preaching easy and anoint us that, Lord, your words may penetrate hearts. And for your thankful, grateful help, we'll praise thee. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. What is that to thee? Follow thou me. <laughs> what is that? What's distracting you tonight from paying attention to Jesus? Perhaps it's Peter's problem, paying attention to what other people are doing. <laughs> or maybe it's your phone in the latest news about this strange virus. Hmm? Or maybe the latest politics or the... Sporting events or their lack thereof, that seems to be big news today. Maybe it's one novel after another, or maybe it's the almighty dollar that occupies all your attention, or how about what other people think about you? Did you ever sit down and analyze that statement? What people really think about us? <laughs> it ain't much. They don't think about us often or much. What's distracting us this evening? For some, it's movies or TV, or others, it's food or video games. I can remember the young people in... Uh, in uh, Mongolia, the 29 kids we took care of there, and we'd get up from the table just after eating this huge meal, and no doubt one of those youngsters would say, what's for supper? <laughs> A lot of distractions out there today. I, pres I, I think there's probably more distractions now than there ever has been in all the history of the world. I don't know about that, but it seems that way. You know,
there's a really important truth that we all need to recognize, and that is the devil does not care what distracts us. As long as we're distracted and not looking and keeping our eyes on Jesus. There was a, uh, a fellow who uh, did some very interesting writing. Uh, he would have been probably, he might have been contemporary with some of us. Um, but he, uh, he wrote a lot about Christianity. And one of the books he wrote was, um, boy, now that name slips away from me. Ah, The Screw Tape Letters. And his name was C.S. Lewis. Now, C.S. Lewis is interesting because he started out as an atheist. And one day God got him cornered and he surrendered to Christ. But I remember reading his screw tape letters. It's a story, uh, a fictional story that he wrote about two devils. There's Junior Devil, who's the nephew, and he has a human being that he's been assigned to, and it's his responsibility to get this guy into hell. And he's corresponding with his senior devil, his uncle who has been a successful devil, and asking him for advice. And the whole book is the senior devil's answers to the junior devil. And I remember one place the junior devil was, was telling him that, uh, I mean, you had, to, you had to figure this out because he never talked. But uh, he, he told his uncle, he said, well, I'm, I'm really happy that my human has joined the Socialist Party. And uh, that was a really good thing. This was, we're probably talking about World War I around that era in England. His, his victim lived. And the senior, the senior said to the junior, he said, you know, um, it, it really doesn't matter which party they join because we have some angles we can work on them no matter what party it is. He said the important thing is that he becomes so consumed with that that he doesn't pay any attention to real religion. Now, the devil doesn't care what has our attention and what is distracting us just so we don't have our eyes on Jesus. One thing I noticed is sickness can be a great distraction. We've had a couple of camp meetings here where everybody had the flu. There wasn't much spiritual work accomplished because people were so concerned about their own physical health, they didn't have time to think about spiritual things. Or maybe it's uh, even, even uh, sickness not of ourselves, but if some close relative or dear friend is deathly ill, that gets our attention. That draws us away. A lot of wealth can get us off course. Uh, a lot of poverty can get us off course. Remember Jesus told that, uh, that parable about the seeds that got planted, the different kind of ground they were planted in. And one of the places where the seed got planted was with the weeds. And Jesus said the weeds grew up first and uh, choked the young plant that had been planted there and it died. And then he said the weeds are, and he named three, the weeds are riches, poverty, and pleasure. He said they choked the word and it didn't bring forth fruit. And then I thought about something that Jesus said that I have seen come to pass in my own lifetime. Jesus said, in the end times, at the end of the world, men's hearts will fail them for fear. They will be so afraid. Woo! I think we're experiencing some of that right now. People consumed with fear. 
Fear can be a big distraction. I'd ask you this evening, what is distracting you right now from getting and keeping your soul right before God? Amen. Can be a hobby. Can be perfectly legitimate things. But let's be careful, Christians, that we don't allow ourselves to be distracted. It seems like there's more distractions trying to get our attention now than there ever has been. Well, what should we do about it? I appreciated Brother George Schaefer there, his picture on the wall, former director of the mission. He said, whenever you preach a problem, always preach an answer. Make sure people understand how to fix the problem if it's in their lives. And so what should we do about the distractions that are around us? How do we guard our minds from being overwhelmed with fear or anxiety or trouble of this world? Well, we have some answers from God's Word. The first one that comes to my mind was, pray every day. Oh, Brother Ledger, that seems so simple. <laughs> well... Why is it that hardly anybody does it? Oh, I know we pray when we get in trouble. My doctor friend said, some people won't read the writing on the wall, they have to read it on the ceiling when they're in the hospital bed. So, men will pray, but I'm talking about praying every day. First thing in the morning. you know that David prayed three times a day when he was writing in the Psalms? He said, Lord, I pray morning, noon, and night. You know, I think if it were known why David fell into sin, you remember that with old Bathsheba? If it were known, he probably started slacking up in his prayer life. You see, the enemy doesn't come in and just knock Christians off their feet because God supports them. But what he does is he undermines our relationship with Christ so other things move in and take over and then sets us up. And when he does give us a good swat, why we don't have the strength to stand. Living without prayer is like living without breathing. You can do it for a few minutes, but it's difficult. Philippians 4, 5 said, be careful for nothing. And that's plain old English for quit worrying. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Amen. My son was talking to me on the phone the other day. He's pretty worried. He hasn't called me this often in a long time. He said, Dad, uh, I'm really worried about you. You're 71 years old. I said, well, Jeff, if it's my time, I know where I'm going. Amen. Amen. We have a hope, folks, beyond Beyond what the ordinary person has. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. Well, how do you give thanks for some tragedy or catastrophe that's come? You know what I was thinking about that today? And every single morning since I heard about this virus that's going around the world, I've been getting up and saying, Lord, thank you. Thank you that I'm healthy today. I don't know what tomorrow's going to bring, but I'm thankful that I'm healthy today. Somebody said, if you knew this was the last day you had on earth, what would you do? A wise Christian said, I'd just keep doing what I'm doing. See, because, folks, we don't have anything to check up on or make up for. We're, we got that all behind us. If you've got some things to do before you die, you better get going. Because who knows when we're going to go? 
Well, Brother Ledger, you know, I, I do pray, but uh, it's kind of hit and miss. You ever heard that saying before? You know what I found out? Christians who pray hit and miss, their Christian experience is hit and miss. That's right. Well, Brother Ledger, I pray when I'm inspired. Well, if I did that, I wouldn't be praying very often. What? You, bro? That's right. We pray because we recognize it's necessary. We realize that we must draw strength from Christ every single day, every single morning. You know, when you get to be 70, then you get to repeat yourself once in a while, but sometimes I think that's good. A fellow asked me one time, he said, why don't the Christians go to the altar when they have altar calls? I said, because we go to the altar first thing every morning. If we didn't go for two or three days, we'll be down there at the altar. Somebody said, "Praying with, going one week without praying makes one week. I said, going one week without praying will make you pretty backslid. Jesus wants us to keep our attention on him. What is that to thee? Follow thou me. <laughs> Are you distracted from the word of God? It's amazing how many things can come up to get between you and reading the word. I mean, it's amazing. After 40 years, it still happens to me. Get ready to read the word and there's 32 things that need to get done first. Now, you, you know that I'm not a fan of wasting my time reading. I really am. I, I'm not a fan of wasting my time reading. You can only read so much news and so much politics and so much virus before you get sick of it. But even good books can educate our minds, but only the Bible can feed our soul. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. The Bible is a means of grace to strengthen us in our Christian walk. Now, there's a number of them. Uh, one of the means of grace is attending church. The Bible says, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together because it gives you strength to gather with other Christian believers and to sing the songs and hear preaching and get testifying and do things that's important. But now we're getting into a situation where many of the Christians in the world, particularly in China, they cannot gather together and assemble themselves together. But they still have the word. Amen. Bible, the Bible will sustain you because it is the bread of life. I remember old brother Norton, he told me one time, he said, you know, he said, the Bible is different flavors on different days. Some days it's just rich and sweet as honey. And you're reading through some chapters that just warm your heart and thrill your soul. Right. He said, and then there's other days you're reading along, and it's like eating dry, uh, shredded wheat. <laughs> you're, really, you're really looking for some water to go along with it. But you know, the Bible says, to endure hardness as a good soldier, I think that we're going to find some real... Um, separating going on between the possessors of Christianity and the possessors of the, the professors of Christianity and the possessors of Christianity. When everything's going well, it's pretty easy to be a Christian and praise the Lord. But when things start getting a little tight, that's when folks abandon Christ and start doing things their own way again. Eat the word to be wise, for you know not when the Lord is coming. Oh, Brother Ledger, do you really think the Lord's going to return in your lifetime? I'm not sure. I think so, but I'm not sure. But one thing I do know, there's a very good chance I may go to meet him before he returns for me. Oh, and by the way, we still have a, quite a large number of large print Bibles left. 
If you haven't got a Bible from my wife and I, we would like to give you a Bible of your very own. Just ask us and let us know and we'll get you one. We can't think of anything better to give a person than the Word of God. And then, allow the Spirit of Christ to live in you. Fully surrender your life to Christ every single morning. Lord, what is thy will for me today? Man, Lord, I got plans. I got things I think you want me to do. But Lord, if you've got some things you need to talk to me about, I want to hear about it. And then shut out at least some of those distractions. The other day, the uh, fire alarm went off here in this building. And I'm sure that most everybody who heard it said, it's got to be a fake alarm. The fire department showed up. Did it even ring? You're looking at me like you don't know. Yeah. This building, two-story over here. It was loud. And everybody feared, oh, yeah, another false alarm. Sure enough, it was. But how many of us uh, run over to the alarm every hour to see if it's going to ring? Not very many of us. But are we checking our phone every hour to see how many inches the virus has moved in the last hour? <laughs> that's not trusting the Lord, folks. That's worrying. Now, we might as well call it what it is. I remember my mom, <laughs> one day I was talking to my mom. They used to live out here in, Toy, in Tice, out at, uh, in Alva, I mean. They lived in Alva, and, until the hurricane came. And the hurricane came and shook their uh, modular home for about four hours while they sat there hugging each other and hoping they were going to make it. Right after the hurricane left, they left. They moved to Arizona. <laughs> they spent the rest of their life there. But while they were here, I was visiting her one day. I really liked having her this close, just 25 miles away. And I was visiting with her, and she made a comment. She said, you know, I'm really having a lot of trouble sleeping at night. And I said, uh, Mom, do you still watch the 11 o'clock news before you go to bed? Oh, yeah, just like they did for the last how many years? I said, I'm going to give you a suggestion. Stop watching the 11 o'clock news. Do you know she did? And she started sleeping better. What is that to thee? <laughs> what is that to thee? We get to worry about some stuff too much. And did you ever notice that for weeks and months, it's an election, and then all of a sudden, everything's changed, and you can't hardly really find anything about an election. It's all about this other thing. I got some news for you. When this is over, it'll be something else. <laughs> it never quits. They, they just keep coming up with new stuff to talk about. I was thinking about what is what we're doing here now. Everybody's pretty much grounded. I was thinking, you know what? This would be a good time to put into practice what you've been learning at the mission. Yes, sir. Become a servant to others. You'd be amazed about how honestly and sincerely thinking about someone else will help you. It'll help you get your thoughts off your problem. Become a servant. Thank the Lord for another day of good health. Be diligent about our duties and pray and read the Bible for strength and courage. Not only for yourself. When you show strength and courage and stability around others, it helps them. Yes. Yes. Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not afraid, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, I will help thee, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Amen. That's the psalmist. And then I found 
In John 16, in my Bible reading this morning, I just wanted to share it with you. It's so good. John 16, verse 33. John 16, 33. Jesus talking. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me, in me, you might have peace. Now listen what he said. In the world you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Amen. I thought that was so good. You shall have trouble, tribulation. You know, there's a, a common belief that, um, that uh, the church is going to get raptured out before all the tribulation starts coming upon the earth. But I, I want to remind everybody, there's a big difference between tribulation, which Jesus said the Christians will go through, and the wrath of God, which shall be poured out upon the earth in the end. Don't allow the distractions to control you. Bring every thought into subjection to Christ. Did you know you can do that? The Bible says that we don't have to let our renegade thoughts run wild in our minds. No matter where it goes, if it's not right, we can ask the Lord to bring it under subjection, to put her down. Do you know he will? When he walked on the world, he calmed the seas. He can calm the sea of our hearts if we'll call upon him. Whether it's fear or anxiety or lust, or anything else that's, that's troubling our soul, we can call on the Lord, Lord, bring peace. And he'll speak the word, and it'll be peace. Praise the Lord. Remember, what we think about is what we become. What we read about is the way we become. Are you allowing the world to put you in its mold? Rather, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may know what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen? Let's stand together. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Of course, if anybody needs to pray, you know the altar is always open here. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, you have promised to keep us in your care as we put our trust in you. Please, Lord, deliver us from the distractions that will draw us away from you. And help us to keep our eyes on you, Lord. You are the author and the finisher of our faith. So give us grace and help to not be concerned about everything else, but get our eyes trained on Thee. And for Your gracious help, we'll thank Thee, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.